What's up and welcome to Complete Nonsense, where we take the latest news, trends, and show you the kind of the money side of it. We're your host. I'm Ben Richardson, coming from you from the East Coast of North Carolina. This is Lindsay DeMuno, a Jersey girl living in the big city of Boston, Massachusetts. And we've got new episodes coming each week. So be sure to, to like, share, subscribe on whatever platforms you're watching from. Lindsay, tell the people what we've got in store for them today. Thanks, Ben. Well, fall is back. That means football, pumpkin spice, and everything nice. We're also going to talk about how girls ruled the world this mm. summer and talk about the latest update on the student loan repayments restarting. But first, a word from our sponsors. What? <laughs> we have sponsors? We have sponsors? <laughs> we have sponsors? Not yet, but we'll okay. get there. We'll get we there. will. I, I believe that. We'll, we'll hope for the best. So, um, but <laughs> no, right. but that... I love that. I love sponsors one day. Yes, one day. But let's jump right in. So this summer was all about the female economy. We had the Barbie movie, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, and it was estimated that those three things added almost $8.5 million to the economy, according yeah. to Morgan Stanley. Did you see that the Barbie was... movie, Ben? I actually did. So um, I don't want to get any shame here. I, I feel like this is something my brothers would pick on me about. But if you're shaming on me like shame on you right um i took my daughter to see the barbie movie and i i was pleasantly surprised like i really didn't know what to expect with it um i thought ryan reynolds gosling no gosling they're both ryan so they're, they're fine they're both funny uh so it works out um uh, but no i thought it was really good like he did a great job playing ken and i, I think i was honestly a little bit shocked at like kind of the purpose of the movie like i remember yeah. i grew up in that era i didn't play with barbies but like i grew up in that era where like barbies was like um you know all about like how you look and it had all right. this stuff but this actually had a really good storyline it did i think the message was just empowering women and like it said that you could be whoever you want to be because there was a president barbie there was astronaut barbie there was just plain old barbie there was a baby like a mom barbie there was everything you could be yeah. anything and do anything that you want yeah, like I honestly, I I really loved, I really loved it. Honestly, like it was very uniquely done. Um, so I was glad, you know, I wasn't sure what I was getting into. Um, you know, taking my daughter to it, it was something that I thought would be cool, um, yeah. and I was pleasantly impressed myself. So definitely, definitely a fan. I thought um, Margot is it Margot Robbie? Margot Robbie, she, she did, did a great job. Amazing. She did you know that she made almost fifty million dollars just of her salary from that movie alone? What do you? What do you even do with that kind of money, right? Like $50 million, but she she's done great. Like, I mean, good for her. Like kudos for her. She's yeah. done a great job with it. So um, I think that's awesome. And then um, well, you were kind of talking a little bit about, um, you know, some of these other like musicians that we're doing tours as well. And you mentioned Beyonce. And I keep going back to a conversation you and I had a long time ago. And I, I felt like a complete idiot. You were like, <laughs> yeah, like it was, what was her nickname? Queen B. Queen She's B. Yeah. Queen You're, yeah. B. That was it. You were like, uh, there's the, you know, the, you know, the Queen B. And I was like, I could not have been more confused. And like in that moment, <laughs> I'd never felt older in my life. Like I felt like, all right, I've, I've way surpassed my peak. And now, like, you know, I'm like that. I'm like that you know, the upper, maybe I'm getting into that, like upper millennial and you guys, you're like closer to the Gen Z line, like than I am, like, we're not super far in age, but enough to where like, I didn't know who the queen bee was. So. I can't believe you didn't know who queen bee was, but yeah. her Renaissance store, I wish that I got tickets, but I didn't, unfortunately, like a little bit out of my budget and I just yeah. couldn't do it. But the costumes were amazing. The tour was amazing. Yeah. I fortunately got to go to Taylor Swift, who was another powerhouse mm. who fueled the economy this summer. That was like, like all the buzz this summer. I feel like all I heard <laughs> is, you know, T Swift and Taylor Swift. And um, I, I have a question for you before we like really jump into Taylor Swift, because yeah. there's a lot to unpack here. I feel like um, are they are they called Swifties? Are they Swiffers um, or Swiffers are the mop? Right. Swiffer is so, a mob. What, yeah. What's what's the fan base? Like what's the name? Swifty. 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 Yeah. I'm a Swifty. Okay. Yeah. Are you a Swifty, Ben? I don't, I don't think so. I don't have like I didn't I think can I be? I mean, I didn't go to the show. So I don't yeah. I don't know that I can be. Um, you can but, be if you didn't go to the show, because a lot of Swifties didn't get tickets to the show. So okay, so you went to the show. 
So what, what was it like for you then? Like, what was that experience getting tickets? Cause I, I heard all I could hear about was like a frenzy. I remember there was like a ticket master, like fiasco around it. So like, just give me a little insight into your journey. The ticket master fiasco was like one of the worst days of my life. I remember just logging on, like trying to get the pre-sale code, getting the email that you weren't selected fine. But then yeah. So many people who are these huge Swifties and fans yeah. also didn't get codes. So the people who end up getting codes were all of these bots and they ended up buying the tickets and then reselling them for Ooh. like triple how, how, charge. How do bots attend the concert? I, like, how does that even happen? Is that, is this like, is AI taking over? Like, is, is that what's think. really going on? Or, I know. Are you, I, you meaning like bots like got it and then like they like, maybe people were able to get them and then resell them at a higher price. Is that yeah. really what's going on? Well, they said it's the bots and then whoever the bots were, were selling them at a higher price. So let's say the ticket was $150. They were reselling it for upwards of $3,000 for oh just a single gosh. ticket. And the $3,000. Yes. And the seats weren't even that good. And that was the mm -hmm. lowest price that I saw when I went to go buy tickets. My myself. first car was less than $3,000. So that, that just is like, that blows my mind a little bit. I'm not going to, date what age that takes me back to if, if it's three thousand dollars could buy a car it was used i will point that out but um oh my gosh that is insane so did, did you get merch too yeah we got merch so I, we ended up my friend's sister got the tickets for us and we ended up paying like 150 dollars, which wasn't bad the seats were awesome like good value but then wait 150 dollars for the ticket wasn't bad yeah that oh, was man. like on the cheaper oh. end Wait, I feel like I'm in a different world right now. This is like inflation's getting the I mean, best of me right now. So uh, this that's interesting. $150 is a good deal. I mean, don't get me wrong, because I was willing to drop like 500 just to see Ooh. Taylor. So and I, now that I now that you've steal. gone, would you have spent even more now that you've experienced it and like known what it's like? I would. I would spend that again. Mm. If I could get a little bit closer, I would spend upwards of 150. So yeah. So what, what was again. the name of this tour? It was the I the eras like the eras, eras tour. tour so it's all the her eras different tour. eras so she has yeah. more than one era yes clearly. okay so what she what era, did did 10 eras that's that's fantastic <laughs> good for her <laughs> um so what what era then did you did you go as i mean wasn't that one of the things like people were dressing up as different eras yes i went as the speak now era so if you listen mm. to her albums it's the album she has a purple dress on the cover of it. It's speak okay, now. Okay, let me take a so. note of that real quick. While we're, <laughs> while we're you got to listen to it. Yeah. But she just came out. So, you know, all that thing with Scooter Braun, he was holding her music, music yep. hostage. Like yep. she is re-recording all of her old albums and she just re-recorded Speak Now back in July. So it was just, it was fitting for me. I had to do it. And so, I wore so a let's, purple let's dress. Let's talk about that. So like, yeah. so we, we know that like, this summer, like, you know, interest rates have been going up. We've seen a lot of things like impacting people. Um, we know a lot of, a lot of folks have like really tightened up budgets, like because of the summer, but you're talking about like high price tickets, high merch, um, having to go out and buy your outfit for oh, like yeah. to match the era. And so like, I mean, I've got to imagine like she's had to have like a pretty significant impact on the economy overboard, like overall. Right. Like that's, yeah, a, she that's had pretty substantial. There was a port. There was a report from the Federal Reserve that said she her tour alone added almost five billion dollars to the economy. That is wild. Yeah, that, that's impressive. Good for you, T Swift. Like she's I, amazing. That's awesome, and good for the fan base for supporting her. So, um, I I still don't I don't get all the the buzz. I don't dislike T Swift. I'm gonna throw that out there. I don't dislike her. It's just like I don't listen to her every day. Um, so I probably don't have the same, you know, thing, but there is something that like does pique my interest a little bit. And yep. I've heard like this buzz, like the rumor mill. And I try not to go deep into these wormholes of, you know, conspiracy, but I heard something about this NFL player by the name of Travis Kelsey. Like, do, do you know anything about that? Like, do you have an inside track on that that maybe uh, I'm not aware of? Of course I do, Ben, because I follow <laughs> Miss Taylor Swift like all the time, but oh, cool. so Travis Kelsey went to her show in, yeah. I think it was Kansas City. And the thing at these shows is you make friendship bracelets and then exchange them with other people. So okay. people were writing like song lyrics or just their name and exchanging them. With oh, I get like, I write your name. I yeah. Get it. Yes. No, so I get it. Um, he made a bracelet and 
in an interview, he said that he put his phone number on it and he wanted to give it to Taylor Ooh. Swift, but she doesn't meet That's or speak clever. with anyone before the show. So he wasn't able to give it. Yeah, to she's got to get her mind right. You know, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't get on stage and be distracted by a love letter. Exactly. So, and then yeah. a few weeks later, a report came out that they were seen hanging out. Ooh. So now. Ooh. And then wait, wait, didn't her now his brother, is it Jason Kelsey? Jason, yeah. He's also an NFL player. Did he confirm the rumor? He said that it's true. So okay. Well, we shall I see. Gu I guess time will tell. And that it's that's incredible by by both ways. So I guess speaking of like speaking of Travis Kelsey, like falls back. Like we've got the NFL's back, college football's back, and um i think pumpkin spice lattes are back, Those are so, back but like when you're talking about like the nfl this is like my arena like i love 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 sports so like i i've been already doing my fantasy football and not you know i'm not gonna hate on travis kelsey but he is the reason i lost week one because he didn't play so salt's in the wound i'm gonna move past it um but i'm one of the things that's probably intrigued me even more than nfl is the college football landscape oh, yeah. and i feel like there's one person who's completely changed the college football landscape. Do you have any idea who I might be talking about, by the way? I think you're talking about Mr. Deion Sanders. Prime time. Prime, Prime time. time. That guy is insane. Like, so Colorado football, I knew nothing about him. Like, Me either. I, I, I had never watched the game before, but I followed Deion Sanders because he used to play for my Dallas Cowboys. Here comes the hate. Like, oh, <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, hey, it's fine. But he played for the Atlanta Braves. I mean, he just had like this extensive history. And I loved him. Like I've, as long as I can remember watching him, I, I loved him. Um, but then he comes in and he like creates this movement of football. It's and crazy. have you seen any of the games yet? I watched the one. I think it was two weekends ago. Like their first it one where they Colorado versus Colorado State. Yes, or, yes, or or that TCU. One. Colorado versus Colorado State. Oh my gosh! That you realize? I think Sports Media Watch said that that had over nine point three million viewers, which made it, I think, like the fifth largest for a college football game. That's insane. So, it, it is nuts. And so I think even like now Colorado has like college football's most expensive ticket, which I guess should, because you're kind of like getting a yeah. show now. I think the last game I watched, I, I feel like um, Lil Wayne. Like, yeah, he came walked out. Him out walked him the out. Rock was there. The Rock like... was there. I mean, when you smell what The Rock's cooking, like, you know, it's something, you know, something's going on there. But, but, and then on top of that, like you think about the impacts, the ticket prices are up in college football, especially in Colorado specifically. But then like thinking about like even some of these endorsements, like you, you were telling me the other day something about his uh, his sunglasses. Right? So yeah, he has a deal with blenders. And apparently in that first weekend of the game, they had one point two million dollars in sales alone in one weekend from those sunglasses. That is wild. I feel Are I you gonna buy a pair? Get, <laughs> I, I was going to say, I kind of feel like I need a pair, uh, maybe specifically for this show. Um, yes. Just so you can't read when I'm like checking out my notes, like way over here somewhere, you know, and then, yeah, um, me but they're great. I don't even know what they cost, but it'd be worth it. And if it, if it helps me to have the, the prime effect, I, maybe I should do it. I, I think they would make you look pretty swag, Ben. I, I, I would love it. So like, yeah. so anyway, so you, you know, you got all these things going on right now. You've got um, sports betting, you know, it's not legal in all states, but there are some states where sports betting's a thing. Yep. So that's back. College football's back. Pumpkin spice, spice latte. Spice. And I feel like now that might be like leaning into one of your love languages. I don't know. Like, is that your thing? I love pumpkin spice. <laughs> I do have to say I'm a basic girl. And when it comes to the pumpkin spice, like okay. it came out end of August this year, which was a week later than normal, but okay. I have to like I have to wait until I start to feel like fall before I get the pumpkin spice. Like I do have to say I'm not totally get that. there the first day getting it, but I've gotten it multiple <laughs> times now. It's already middle of September, but the prices of these of these drinks are pretty crazy. They're five ninety five now for just one grande size Boston latte. pricing. That is Boston. I okay. think it's probably okay. in major cities. Like I heard someone say in New York, it's upwards of six. Maybe okay. 625 or something like that, but it's but, crazy. I mean, come on, like you gotta treat yourself, you know. Exactly. Like, treat at least it's once. all I mean, one latte isn't gonna kill you and it's not gonna it, break the bank. Yeah, I mean well, yeah, it's true. The problem for me though is like 
when I get a pumpkin spice latte, I'm also going to be accompanied by my wife, my kids, and all of a sudden, you know, four or $5 drink becomes a $20. Um, yes. Oh, you know, that's fair. Beverages. So, um, but I do, I'm, I'm a big fan of pumpkin spice latte. I'm not a coffee drinker, believe it or not. Mm. Um, so I have to do the like cream based, whatever, but the yeah. flavor itself still is so good, but you're not Lindsay. You are also like, you're a food connoisseur. Like you're like a chef baker like guru on top of being this amazing social media guru and so like tell me like do you do pumpkin spice this time of year like into your like food ingredients too of course yeah i love pumpkin spice the only thing i don't like is pumpkin pie because it's really a texture thing for me i know Uh, i'm gonna get hate for that too throw her hate right now Pumpkin pie is so good. I just, I can't get behind it. Like I'm such an apple pie, apple crisp person that I just can't get behind the pumpkin pie, but I love anything like pumpkin bread, pumpkin donuts, Mm. pumpkin pancakes, pumpkin waffles, anything else. I got got you. Yeah. No pumpkin pumpkin pie. pie. That's okay. I just, I don't really know. Like to me, like even going, you know, we're going into the holidays and stuff. Yeah. I don't even know how I could have Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie like pumpkin pie being there. It's like such a tradition for us. For us, it's pecan pie or pecan, Pecan, however you want to say it. (laughs) Pecan, pecan, you know, tomato, tomato, (laughs) whatever you want to call it. I know, but yeah. 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 I go through the same things all the time, by the way, like, you know, you're, you're up North. I'm, I'm down in, you know, the Mm -hmm. Southern States a little bit. We, we say different things. Um, My, my wife grew up North and like, we used to have this conversation about like Don and Dawn. So what I'm talking about is like D A W N is how do you say that? Dawn. Dawn. Like it's Dawn. got an A W in it. So it's yeah, Dawn, Dawn. Right. And so my wife says D A W N is Don. And like, no, Don's like Don's a guy's name. Like that's not Dawn. I'm that, talking about a different Dawn, but it's just like the difference in how, how we talk. It's different. That's that's interesting because you said she's from the north and so am I. Yeah. So how I don't, it's all I don't the different, know, maybe different part, maybe different part. And she's kind of like the, like the, um, Ohio. So I, I guess that's more gotcha. like that. Um, she calls it the, the heartbeat of America. Um, and so, uh, may, maybe it's close enough. I don't know, but it, it's I, definitely interesting. So pecan pie, I'm glad you enjoy or pecan pie, <laughs> whichever it is. I'm glad you enjoy those. So, yeah. um, but no, with, with everything else. So like, we've had a lot of good things happening in the, the fall, like football's back. I feel like uh, college sports in general is back, which is great. Um, and then you have um, pumpkin spice latte back. So it feels like really not a lot could go wrong. It's starting to, the temperatures are starting to calm down a little bit, which is actually really nice. Um, nice. But not everything is great in all areas. So we, you talked earlier, like we we're going to be talking a little bit about the student loan repayment, and yep. which is just looming right here around the corner. So tell us what's going on. Yeah, so student loan repayments are starting to kick back in October 1st. As of September 1st, that interest started accruing again. So your monthly payment might look a little slightly higher. It's not going to change drastically. But if you haven't been paying those payments right now, you're looking at an extra $200, $300 a month. That's Mm -hmm. the average student loan payment right now. I I feel like that's going to impact a lot of people. You know, and people anticipated it, I hope. You know, it's been... I feel like we've seen a lot of it in the news. Um, I know our team at Bank Rates covered a lot of it. So we're like trying to understand it, trying to help people kind of be prepared for it. But it doesn't change the fact that there's a lot of people, you know, we never want to make light of situations like this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of low middle income or middle income families who are really struggling right now. And this is only going to add to the pinch that they're already feeling, right? So, um, you know, and I, I think we've done a lot of studies recently with Bank Rate that talk about like the impact of student loans and whether or not, um, you know, a little bit controversial, like whether or not, you know, borrowers should be responsible for paying back student loans or should there be more assistance from government? I mean, there's been a lot of really good conversation around that. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to get political at all, but I think the federal government should, I don't think there's a problem with, I think the problem lies within people being misinformed about student yeah. loans and not knowing yeah. like how much they need to take out, what the interest rates are and what is what the financial sure. implication is going to be. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the real, the real issue, you know, for really diving into it, you know, for my, my POV um, is that I think a lot of people don't truly understand what they're getting into. 
Um, I, I don't know whether or not, you know, I'm not going to call out one person over the other saying they're wrong, they're right. Um, but I do feel like, you know, a lot of students, you know, go back to when I was 18 years old and I'm taking out student loans that are going to really impact me for the rest of my life. I'm thinking about the college experience at that time. Like I want yeah. that college experience. I'm not thinking about, you know, how that's going to impact like where I live or, you know, how much I can afford, you know, four, eight, 10, 12, 15, 20 years from now. That's right. not where my brain goes. And so it's definitely understandable why why there's a lot of different people having different opinions on it, because, you know, some people will say, oh, you know, that we need more funding from the federal government. Some people are saying, hey, schools need to like really like limit like, you know, how much they're charging for this. And like then you have the other side of the boat where people are talking about like you've got to be more informed on what your degree can help you earn long term so that you make mm -hmm. wise decisions. And so, you know, there, there's good points on uh, really on everything. But nonetheless, like October 1st coming right here is going to impact a lot of people in an already tough financial time. Right. Yeah. So. And if you haven't been paying, just know you have options. The new save plan comes out. It's replacing the repay plan for borrowers. And then we also have options on bank rate. If you need to refinance, we can help you find a loan. Yeah. We're not a bank. We cannot loan you any bank. money. Can we make that like everybody like say it with us like one, two, three. We, we are, are not, not a, a bank. bank. <laughs> we, we, we are, are literally a, a source to help people like find tools and resources to help you just um, kind of get your life together to help you like with your financial journey, like really to help guide you. And that's our, our really our purpose. And so yeah. we, we want to do that for, for consumers. And so, yeah, great advice, Lindsay. Um, I yeah. think people <laughs> should do that. Um, I, but yeah. I did that for myself with, awesome. I had private and federal loans and coming out yeah. of college had no idea. My private loans were the interest rate was astronomical, like 10% mm. had no idea. That's like, way higher than the average is about like six yeah. percent right now i went on bank rate thank god i was fortunate <laughs> enough to work for this company like right out of college yeah. and i found that i could refinance for a much yeah. lower rate and it's really helped me so that's awesome yeah well that's awesome well i think that's probably we're like right up on like covering everything we wanted to cover yeah today, right so um i know we, i honestly hope everybody's enjoyed hanging with us a little bit and having a little fun hopefully this was a little bit educational and i'm sure we've talked about a lot of the things that are going through your head already that's kind of our goal is we want to be practical with what we talk about um and so yeah i mean that that's kind of that's my two cents Lindsay. You, did you have fun i had fun i hope everyone else had fun enjoyed talking with us um we have some spicy topics coming up next week. Ben, if you want to hit on those, yeah, what we're going to talk about. Gosh, I bet spicy is a really good word for it because we're, we're going to be talking about like Elon Musk and the potential of X, uh, formerly known as Twitter, uh, charging users for subscriptions now. Um, definitely a hot topic uh, right now. We're going to be talking about Halloween. We're talking about Amazon's second prime day with the holidays coming up. I feel like it couldn't be more timely, but yeah, we've got so much more. So really, really, really looking into diving in uh, to yeah. some more topics next week. I can't wait. Thank you again for tuning in to the first episode of Complete Nonsense. We'll see you all next week. Yep. See ya.